Hey everybody, Radaman here. Thanks for tuning in to the very first episode of a brand new RimWorld YouTube series, Frost and Fire. Frost and Fire is a result of my community voting that I should do an extreme temperature challenge where it gets very hot and very cold. And I created a mod, a pretty large mod, to accommodate this series. But before I start, let's go over the rules. So, the mod that I made for this is going to be available to the entire community. And for all of us to play the same thing, I created a community challenge. This means that we'll be all using the same scenario and save game files and mod load out as well. And here are the challenge rules. To use the provided scenario and save game file, you can't have more than one colony or move map tiles. You can't change the difficulty or storyteller. And it is set to Randy is random, losing is fun. So it is pretty difficult. You may not use any mods to make the game easier, so just use user interface mods, and you have to remain neutral or allied with all factions. The goal, of course, is just to get off the planet. So, if you don't know anything about Frost and Fire, there is a nine-minute sort of overview of the entire mod in the description. Uh, that is also can be found on my YouTube channel. There is a website, rodamot.com slash frostandfire, which gives you pretty much the same information as the overview video. Or, alternatively, you can find the Frost and Fire mod on the Steam Workshop. That gives you somewhat of a truncated uh, overview, but still an overview nonetheless. Alrighty, so we're starting off, and let's analyze both the world here. So let's get out to the world. So we are on the Seed, Frost, and Fire, with spaces between all three words. As you can see, the coverage is 100%. And... We are at 181 North, 8369 East. Now, of course, if you are using the save game file, you don't need this information. But if you would like to use this scenario and then generate the same map, here it is. Uh, I do have royalty enabled, but royalty is not required for Frost and Fire. There are two scenarios, one that supports royalty and one for those who do not have it enabled or do not own it. So it is up to you. Um... Here's my factions. So you can never, ever, ever be allied with the Reapers. And we have the United Cities, the Machinists, and the Rebel Farmers. They're all enemies of the Reapers. All right. Analyzing the terrain that we have around us, we've got uh, two points of ingress west, uh, one through spiders. So what I'm going to do before anything else is to mark down this area as dangerous so that we don't go there. We also have some spiders down here. So I'm going to mark this as dangerous as well for the same reason. And let's invert this and rename this Avoid Spiders. Done. Uh, from the east, it all looks pretty open. North looks open and south looks open as well. And we're landing around here. Now, other things to note. The fertility of this uh, map tile, of this terrain, biome, whatever you want to call it, is basically zero. There is some barely fertile areas in the tunnels and caves, and that's about it. Uh, for terrain affordance, you do have to avoid the pipes, and there might be some shallow water. Yep, there's some shallow water in the tunnels, but that's about it. Uh, all right, so let's land and introduce you to the characters. So we've got JD, Raptor, Gabe, and Bash. Uh, JD is an industrious iron wheel jogger who's Burning Passions are shooting, crafting, medical. And backup passions is construction and mining. Raptor is hypersensitive, sanguine, and bloodlust. Now, if you're playing on non-royalty uh, DLC, instead of uh, hypersensitive, he'll have fast learner. Uh, he has medical, social, intellectual, with some crafting and cooking. Gabe has uh, cyclic death, super immune, quick sleeper, plants, mining, shooting, Animals and artistic. And then Bash is brawler, nimble, tough, melee, construction, cooking, animal, and medical. Let's give them priorities. Right off the bat, I want JD and Gabe to do mining. I want uh, Bash to do construction. And then I'm going to have uh, Raptor... Do research eventually, but initially just haul. I am also going to want to set up where I want to live. So, 
eventually tapping into the geothermals here would be a great source of power. And I'm going to settle around this uh, valley. Uh, I'm going to set up a sun lamp and I'll set it up here. Just arbitrary. All right, let's lay out the sort of pathing for the sun lamp. You know, the minimum space requirements or whatever. So this is the bare minimum requirements for this sun lamp. Uh, but I'm also going to cut out a little corner here because I will be adding uh, some cooling. So it's going to look like this. Uh, then on top of that, I'm going to have a door here and here. Oh, no, here and here. Like this. Leading eventually to airlocks. So this is the... Uh, I'll have it be more symmetrical for some of you that might care. Uh, so this is the initial build that I want. Uh, it also means that I'm going to put... Uh, let's put steel here. So raw resources. Put it in preferred. And put raw resources out there. And then in here I'm going to have... Just called stockpile. And this is not going to include raw resources. So the things that decay quicker are going to be inside, and things that don't decay as fast are going to be outside. So then Raptor, once you equip that revolver, I want you to start hauling in steel. Now for JD, Gabe, and Bash, I'm or JD and Gabe, I'm going to have them start to mine the close ores. And then Bash, you're going to get started on the structure, but I also want you to start on... Um, setting up a power grid of sorts. So I'm going to set up a uh, wind here and then inversely here I can even nudge this a little bit. So wind that faces one another like this and this will run out like that. I'm having it avoid the geothermal and then eventually probably knock down this structure here and cut these trees and put two more wind in there. Leaving this for maybe solar. All right. That's a good start. I'm going to keep the meals and the medicine forbidden. Uh, actually, Raptor, first thing I want you to do is haul the components. So JD is going west to this metal, steel, whatever it is. And the Gabe is going south, mining different spots. Uh, Bash, you should not hunt. All right, so let's get this built. All right, Raptor, uh, what I want you to do is seek out resources that are a little further afoot from our base. Gabe, what are you... Okay, you're still mining. Good. So this is a, a clean start. Uh, what I'm going to do is have a kitchen up here and then have the dining room and living quarters over here eventually. But initially, we're just all going to live piling into this small space that will turn into a hydroponic area. But that's going to that's gonna be a minute. Doesn't become hydroponic overnight. Hey, Bash, JD, and Gabe, all looking good. Now, one of the things you might notice is we're starting at the start of um, fall. You know, it's the 2nd of September. Uh, but it will get so much more violent temperature-wise. That's something that you're going to have to be aware of. Uh, that is the resource scarcity and uh, temperature variance are probably the main challenges of this series. Uh, certain resources are extraordinarily rare, like stone for instance uh you're gonna definitely have to buy and then some things that you'd normally grow in fertile soil like double strand are just basically impossible you're just not gonna get double strand either uh take a look at the wildlife we do have a bunch of blood spiders i have to keep an eye out for and then a gorilla somewhere yeah here it is Raptor still hauling. 
I'm going to have JD and uh, Gabe start to haul their steel as well. So that Bash can focus more on construction than anything else. And then I might have Raptor start delivering material uh, to the wind turbines. So steel is no issue, but the issue with having an abundance of steel and a lack of things like, let's say, stone is flammability. I think you can all see where I'm going with this. Um, the world is... Everything that we build is going to be quite flammable, if you ask me. Oh, uh... Raptor. I'm going to have you move... I, I'm not going to use the caravan trick all that often, but I'm going to have him move the food and the medicine right now. Bash, you keep working. All right, let's drop this stuff off so that we just don't have to haul it like 15 times. You know, that would, that would definitely be a lot slower. All right, so we're starting to get the external structure going, but until we have wind power, uh, we're definitely not going to cool down. And yes, everybody is currently heat stroking, if you were wondering. I'm also going to uh, forbid... Here, let's start grabbing the rest of this stuff. I'm going to forbid all the meals until I have a table. I don't want anyone... Um, I don't want anyone... You know, eating without a table, if I can help it. Right, let's load the rest of this up. Uh, so Bash is roofing everything off, and then we're going to try to get, here, we're going to try to get, uh, there we go, uh, try to get our wind power up and running afterwards. There we go. Okay, so it's all roofed up. Let's forbid the meals. All right, Raptor, I want you to start delivering to this wind turbine, and Bash will do the other one, and that will get our wind up quicker. I could also maybe at some point in the future mine out the corners here if this is an overhead mountain and put another wind turbine, like, here. But I don't want to put one where it's going to block the uh, geothermal in the future. All right, JD and Gabe... I'm going to force you to haul some of the steel that you've mined, saving Bash some uh, footwork. There we go. And here is our first wind turbine, and then we're probably going to need more than one, likely. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... Mine out some of this right now with uh, with JD so that we can put in another wind turbine, nesting it in here. I'm going to have to cut down some of the trees, but that's fine. Alright, so deliver the components. And Bash, you are going... Yep, you're already doing it. Wonderful. So, this wind turbine is generating 92 watts, which is not going to be enough to power on a cooler. In fact, I'm going to need three wind turbines just to generate that first... So Bash, after you're done breaking this uh, ship chunk down, we'll get a wind turbine here. Well, we'll actually build this one. I'm gonna stop the uh, stop the breaking down the chunks. All right, so JD, you're gonna dig here so that I can have an unobstructed wind turbine. Hopefully, this here will not be overhead mountain. In fact, I'll check that now. I'll dig right there. Because if it is, I'll have to move it up one. It is overhead mountain. Wonderful. Okay. Well, then... Up one is fine. And remove roof from here. Alright, bash. That's, that's good project. Alright, so now we're starting to do AC in here.
which is going to be critically important. Let's work on this wind turbine. And uh, Raptor, what I want you to do is to start delivering for a table and deliver materials for a uh, recreation, deliver materials for a surface to eat on, and then start delivering materials for bedding. Now I will work towards getting uh, everybody their own bedding and all that, but right now, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to focus on, you know, making sure that we have uh, a comfortable base for everybody to live in. Or I'm going to have some mood issues, aren't I? All right, so let's deliver for the beds so that Bash can make them much, much, much quicker. And we are starting to get AC here. There we go. Now we have enough wind power to fire up both coolers, which should be enough to cool this down to a non-heat stroke level. JD. Uh, actually, Bash, remove the roof here when you're done. And then Raptor, you haul the steel. Uh, looks like the blood spiders that I was worried about went for the mega spiders and took themselves out of the equation. So that's fine by me. Gabe, you're going to be required to cut these trees down, so I'm going to send you over to cut the trees now, because he's their best farmer, and then that will start producing, uh, that will start producing more power, because right now it's blocked by the trees. Alright, Bash is going to make sure that we have a surface to eat on, and then eventually beds. So let's work on the surface to eat on. And then I can unforbid the meals now that we ate with tables or we will be able to eat with tables. Uh, and we're starting to get the beds constructed. Which will allow us to be a little bit more comfortable. An excellent one too. And then probably the next big project is to get a kitchen and hydroponics and research table. There's a lot of projects, as, as you might have imagined. Uh, all right, last bed. All right, normal quality. Uh, who's our fast sleeper? It is Gabe. So I'm going to give Gabe the normal quality bed, and I'm going to give Raptor the best, because he's going to do research, and then the last two are good quality beds between Bash and, and, uh, and JD. Okay, you are hauling raw resources, haul the steel. So the next project is, let's get an airlock here. Something like that. And then we're also going to want to get a uh, double insulation uh, pretty much everywhere outside of our, uh, this, is, this here is gonna be an airlock as well. But double insulation, double walls, everywhere around our farm uh, because the farm is the most temperature sensitive part of the base and just for aesthetics I'm going to put the corner pieces in here because I can afford it, but um, there we go So that's sort of the layout of the initial farm and we'll get the Get a stool for the research and then we'll also get steel chest table for uh, some recreation All right day one Looking good. Now that I've properly designed my power systems to avoid the uh, hydropon uh, the geothermal, I, I don't need to worry about that. What do I need to worry about? So I have a gorilla that is probably getting increasingly more hungry and he's going to be dangerous to me. Uh, we've got bugs down here. They're guarding some jade and lots of steel. So it is 70, it is temperate in inside here, which is going to allow us to keep cool. Gabe is back as a quick sleeper back to already mining. 
All right, so this is minimum wind done. Minimum wind, we only have enough power to, to power up one cooler. If I had, uh, what is that, 90, 270. So right now we're making about 276 watts of power. And I need a bunch more wind. So battery tech is gonna be uh, pretty, pretty necessary. All right, Raptor, uh, I want you to start delivering for the research bench. And then as soon as Bash is awakened, uh, we'll be able to build that and you'll be able to start research towards hydroponics. And then by the time I have the hydroponics set up, I want to have like a barracks of sorts so that there's places for my guys to sleep, not in the farm, because that will all turn to farmland. Right, so Raptor right now is you're just hauling in steel. And then some wood. All right, Mr. Raptor. Let's avoid spiders. And then also, you're going to be researching in a second once you're done hauling that stuff. In fact, I'm going to clear your prioritize work as soon as you deliver. Clear. Looking good there, Gabe. So now we have an airlock, which will help to keep it cooler inside. And then what I probably want to do is let's go ahead and deconstruct this stuff so that it can fit some more wind power. And then we have another airlock so I can unforbid that door. And then I'm going to double wall everything. And the double walls is to prevent uh, uh, overheating or overcooling issues. You know, double walls with the double insulation helps to improve uh, heating and cooling efficiency. Okay, so building the chest table is going to take a minute. But we are already on our way to getting hydroponics which will help to keep us fed. Because we have 63, uh, 63 uh, packs of survival meals, and then we might have a little opportunity to do some hunting, but like not much, really not much at all, because there's not a lot of animals here. Uh, I guess there's more blood spiders, new blood spiders, so that's dangerous and something to keep an eye out on. But um, yeah, there's not a lot of opportunity to do a ton of uh, hunting, so you're definitely going to have to grow most of your food. Or... You know, you could possibly get ranching animals for eggs and stuff like that, but those opportunities are kind of few and far between. All right, so there's a gorilla hunting game I'm going to pause for a second. Uh, gorillas are quite, quite, quite dangerous creatures. Uh, you could think of them as like, like sort of bears, I guess. So JD, Raptor, you're going to get out here and help to intercept. The bear is out here. Gabe, go south. Bash, get ready. So these are, the gorillas are sort of like, uh, you know, they, they're about the strength and danger of a grizzly bear. I need to get some shots on to intercept it. All right, right now it's chasing raptor. All right, let's all reconvene over here and hunt it together. Interrupting everything that we were previously doing. All right, and hopefully it chases Bash. Nope, it's not chasing Bash. There, it's downed. Um. Female, okay, so I'm going to hunt it fully. And then that means we have roughly, what, three days, two and a half days to create some sort of kitchen. 
Uh, I had planned on the kitchen being here. I just hadn't planned on it being built quite yet. Uh, but I guess... So the most efficient shape uh, to heat or cool is a square. That is the greatest area for the least amount of uh, resource. Uh, so I want a square kitchen. So this is going to be the square kitchen. And then I'm also going to put a cooler in here to keep this hallway uh, cool so that the airlock works. Um, let's make it a little bit bigger. I don't know how many coolers I'm going to need. So let's do this shape. Do an electric stove. And then I'm obviously going to need a lot more power generation in order to support such a behemoth project. Um, that I think is going to be pretty obvious. So let's also double insulate it. And I'm also going to want a steel butcher table. I'll stick this uh, here. I don't really care where it goes, but it's going to go there for now. All right, so let's start delivering materials. And then Bash, I'm going to have you deconstruct this stuff. Um so that I can expand the power grid. Because if I'm gonna have a kitchen that freezes anything, uh, it's gonna be very much required to uh, to generate a little, a little bit more power. All right, Gabe, I'm gonna have you pull this stuff and then cut down these trees. All right, so I, I am planning on putting some additional wind here and here once we have that stuff out of the way. And I think I'm gonna have um, Raptor play delivery person for a bit, just to try to get the resources delivered so that Bash can build more effectively. All right, so before I even do anything here. Let's haul the steel over. I do also have to worry about moods because mental breaks, especially in extreme temperatures and um, extreme situations, could be very, very deadly. So yeah, we do have a bit of a war between spiders here. Mega spiders and blood spiders going at it. You're still researching. And then I'm also going to need to go after the ship chunks for their components as well. All right, JD, haul that over. And just leave it there, that's fine. Alright, so we're starting to get cool coolers in here. Uh, the coolers in here are going to be idle uh, for a bit because it's not walled off. And straight to bed. All right, everybody that currently has heat stroke should lose the heat stroke overnight. Yep, there it goes. Now the soil here is too low uh, fertility to ever really support crops. Uh, but it will support these sort of sessile mechanoid trees. Okay. And G uh, Gabe should be compact steel mining. All right, so we have about two days to butcher this thing, and then we'll have a certain amount of days in order to make sure that we've got... Uh, refrigeration or freezing. Okay, so here are some tribals passing by. Just passing by. As you can see, now that we're getting later in the fall, it is becoming less hot. So the amount of the temperature is not as bad and we're heading into our first winter. Uh, so all of these coolers that I have here are probably not all that necessary now, but they will be necessary when it comes time to prepping for next summer. These seasons are very, very, very violent. Nice. 
so we're starting to get a source of food on. And then I'm going to want to get some additional power grid up. We're going to have rolling black brownouts because I simply don't have enough power to support uh, this stuff here. So these coolers are going to bring the temperature down to cold. Let's say 26 Fahrenheit, which is freezing, obviously. Uh, I'm going to have a yeah, okay, there, that's fine. So I could at any point uh, butcher this gorilla, and it'd be it'd be good to go. Uh, JD, what I want you to do is remove the floor here. Marble tiles are going to really make for good bedrooms. Oops. I'm having you clean, but whatever. Marble tiles are definitely at a premium. premium. Uh, another thing that I'm going to have him do is head over here and break these down. Now that it's not so hot. Uh, in, in, the, in the months where it's not broiling hot, you should definitely... Definitely take advantage of uh, capitalizing any resources that in summer and winter you won't have access to. That's um, critically important. I cannot stress that enough. So these steles with their mass amounts of marble is going to really help me design a, uh, a pretty base. An attractive base that keeps people happy. We're also going to want a lamp in here. And then this cooler should bring it down to freezing as well. What do we say? 26? Okay. And we'll store our meals in here. JD. Let's have you queue up some hauling. And as you can see, due to my sole reliance on wind, um, we do already have a bit of a brownout. And this is going to be a recurring thing as soon as the wind goes low. I'm going to have a, a lack of the ability to power up anything or everything. Um, just, you know. That's how it is. And then as soon as the wind picks up, we're good again. Like magic. Alright, so JD is hauling in this uh, marble. And... Gabe just finished off mining this corner. So here's our full realized power grid. Looks pretty good. Butcher creature. Uh, let's see. No an no insect corpses. And who's my cook? It's going to be Bash. So Bash, butcher that thing. And then I'm going to stockpile. And let's design this smartly now so I don't have to do it later. So three individual stockpiles. And then a stockpile for the rest of the stuff. And then a stockpile for meals. So here is going to be... Psychoid leaves. Let's have it be important. Plant matter, psychoid leaves. Here is going to be important for uh, meat that is not human. So this will be uh, cooking meat, cooking veg. So raw food of vegetarian, and then everything in here preferred for uh, raw food meals that are not packaged survival meals. Um, that's probably good. And then in here, we'll do important for meals. And then when we cook, we'll bring it to this spot here. I'll have this be sort of an airlock, but I'll probably leave the door open for ease. And then, once we clean this slag up, 
There. Now it's dirty, but it's not going to kill us. Uh, we also want to haul in the Gorilla Leather. That's going to be important stuff. And all the new creatures have their own sort of leather properties in the light. So that's going to be important for you to follow as well. The different different leather. So Gorilla Leather, for instance, has um, pretty decent cold and heat insulation. It's pretty beautiful. And then it offers a fair bit of heat and sharp armor. Uh, but not so much blood. Somewhat typical. Okay, so there's no more wild animals anywhere. Uh, there are... There's the mega spiders and that's about it. The, they killed off the remaining uh, blood spiders. I'm also going to want to get a smelter. I'm not exactly sure where I want to put it right now, but I'm going to want one in the future. Because the map is literally covered in slag, and uh, I should take advantage of that. It looks like Gabe here. You need something to do, so I'm going to give you some additional mining cues. I'm going to try to get the, uh, the components. And Gabe, Gabe is also a farmer, so soon he's going to be responsible for um, planting the hydroponic stuff. That, that will that will lie squarely on his shoulders. So, JD, I'm going to pause for a second. JD, I'm going to have you switch gears now. You are going to help me construct more than mine, and I'm going to delete a lot of stuff. So, yes, build the smelter. And Bash and JD are going to claim as much uh, stone as possible for security purposes. So, one of the things I want to do is... Grab all this wonderful material and put it to use in secure bedrooms and the like. All right, let's turn this off, though. I don't need that right now. Ooh, a power outage where we are losing lights. That's not good. So down here, we do have a choke point. And let's build this with limestone and a steel door. And then we have another choke point over here. Same deal. Limestone, steel door. So when enemies spawn down here, they'll go around. And in fact, I might even push them out this way. So to that end, let's find train affordance. And this is for future security, driving enemies towards what will eventually become a kill box. For security's sake. So these are very good projects to have. And then uh, another thing I want to do is I'm going to take off auto home zoning because uh, I don't want to own massive swaths of the area around these little walls. I just want to own the wall themselves. All right, so now any enemies coming from the south will go around and ingress this direction. And then I can drive all the enemies that are coming to my base through this direction into, you know, turrets and the like, right? I mean, that's that's sort of the idea. Which means I want to get rid of all the ruins that might be in the way. Like these ruins or these ruins. Um, so that I have a clear shot to kill, you know, anyone that's trying to attack me. No line of sight blocking or anything like that. Alright, looking good so far. Now, I'm not going to use this meat until I have some vegetables so I make fine meals. Fine meals are going to be really, really rare. And uh, I definitely want to... I want to preferably save the fine meals for when I have mood issues and not waste them on everyday consumption. Forbid these so that I deconstruct everything. All right, they're going for a walk. Uh, Raptor is very close to having hydroponics finished. JD is breaking down some additional structures. Gabe is mining. 
and let's get the compacted machinery first. I think that's going to be really important for me to stockpile up. Now, another thing I might want to do is to fill in these overhead mountain zones uh, if I'm worried about an infestation risk. Because there is an infestation risk leaving that the way it is. That's not something I would do soon. It's kind of a low priority, low, you know, low importance type of thing. But that is something I should do at some point is to fill that in so that I don't have bugs spawning in the vulnerable back of my base. Speaking of the vulnerable back of my base, um... I'm going to get a very, very simple sort of wall here to protect what's back here uh, so that enemies can't quick, easily get to the sensitive stuff. All right, so now that we're getting some additional limestone, uh, I will queue up those walls to be finished off. And th these are just very simple retaining walls. They don't mean anything. They're not... You know, they're not all that useful or whatever, but they're going to, uh, they're going to keep enemies from entering my area that aren't sappers from directions that I'm not, uh, haven't, you know, planned to defend from. All right, so that's the remainder of the limestone. And then, uh, blocks like granite should be used for, like, kill box type constructions. You know, the, uh, the most sensitive parts of my walls and the like. And if you see the temperature being temperate here, uh, don't you worry. This is just because it's between seasons. The spring and the fall are temperate, and the winter and the uh, summer are just hell. I don't, I can't, I can't even explain how bad it's going to be, but it's, it's going to be bad and you should prep for the worst. Which also means at some point getting heaters everywhere. I don't have a network of heaters at the moment. Um, but that's definitely something I'm going to need. And I, I certainly in this area don't have enough coolers either. But uh, yeah, it's starting to drop. We're now below the sort of cooler temperature. So uh, that means getting heaters out uh, pretty soon. And then I also want to get a proper bedroom. So... Bedrooms. Um, that is a very, very, very good thing to plan out. I do have a lot of marble, and marble is going to be very crucial to have uh, high-functioning bedrooms. So what I want to do here is to have a little bit of um, exposed wall in this area. Let me um, figure out how I want to lay this out. Maybe like this. And then... Alright, so that's steel and this is marble. All right, I'm gonna pause for just a second. So, all of the bedrooms are gonna be roughly the same shape. Uh, because of my extraordinarily limited amount of resources, I have to make sure that they are um, like min max size. Let's put doors in them and then vents in between. and vents out to a main area. All of this is marble. And then the outside structure here is, instead of uh, double walling marble, we're gonna, we're gonna wall it up steel. And then I'm gonna have some sort of workshop, work, living area here. But I have to be very, very, very careful about how much functional um, square footage this takes. Uh, so this nook here is going to be like a research, a high-tech research bench area uh, where that I can sterilize. Um, and then I'm going to need sort of a bare minimum amount of square footage for the rest of this. So it's going to be something like a door here. And this will be where my defenses are. So if I'm putting a door here, actually a door here. And here. 
this is going to be a long uh, airlock. One of which we should be able to defend more easily. So over here will be steel. And then a distant airlock. And then this will be sort of the living quarters and the like. It's hard to picture it right now, but that's the plan. All right, so you're digging a compacted steel. That's fine. Hydroponics is now done. Let's immediately pivot to solar. And I'm going to uh, start to get hydroponic um, benches out. This is going to take a ton of resources because they're very, very expensive. Uh, but that was to be expected. Now I'm going to keep this light off because I don't want to spend the resources for it. So uh, hydroponics is going to look something like that, right? Um, these beds are sort of in the way. So these are going to be the initial hydroponic tables I, I construct. And I'm going to put in, let's copy this setting and copy the name. And the last thing I do in this episode is just put my stockpile back. All right, guys. Well, that is all the time I have for this very first episode. I just want to reiterate, if you have an interest in playing Frostifier for yourself, just go to, well, here you are. Go to rodamont.com slash frostandfire or search the Steam Workshop for the Frostifier mod and scenarios. You can get the save game files only from my website because it can't share save game files over Steam. If you have any feedback for this very first episode, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed it all. Thank you all so very much for watching. I will catch you next episode. The schedule is at rodamont.com. Thanks for watching and adios.